So I'm going to talk a little bit about Blame Canada. I posted a few chapters for you to read. Um, and some of this will be a little bit redundant because it goes into the history. And then it talks about some theories that will become very important for us. So, um, you know, definitely some things you want to know for the exam, stuff like the audience commodity. Um, you want to know a little bit about some of the stuff I'm going to talk about now as well. So if you look at the intro chapter, um, they talk about South Park has actually an intellectual cartoon. Now, this is debatable on so many levels. Um, but I think as time went on, it did get more philosophical. It did get more intellectual to the fact that we have a fucking class on it. So let's just, <laughs> let's just get to that point. And we'll be kind of delving into, um, you know, uh, South Park in more depth um, over the coming weeks and, you know, show its sophistication and also, you know, how it's not in so many ways. But obviously we can tell it's a, you know, it's, it's cut out style and just general style of animation. It's a very low fi it's a very low fidelity um, style of animation. And it's what works, works for them. Um, it doesn't need to be um, really glossy and, and pretty. And, um, you know, one of the things the chapter talks about is how like a lot of the humor is boomer humor. So, so um, been a lot of talk about this lately with the democratic candidates, but, um, you know, when we're talking about boomers, we're talking about people over, um, over, over 50 years old, you know, for the most part. And, you know, you got to think, you know, uh, those people were 28, 29, 30 when, um, you know, when South Park first came out, you know, and that's kind of the age of Matt, Matt and Trey. So, um, they had this type of humor and, and the idea was like the humor of South Park, like it, it, it brought in and attracted both Gen X and Gen Y and maybe some of y'all and Gen Z, um, you know, and so therefore it had a really big demographic and therefore it made it highly valuable, um, you know, highly valuable audience that Comedy Central could sell. Um, but I think the important thing is that it does, in many ways, if you're not an idiot, it does make you think. It does give you some ways to think about the world, to think about politics, to think about uh, race and gender, to think about our bodies, to think about, you know, drugs and laws and all these sorts of things that are really important. I'm actually really interested to see uh, what they do with the coronavirus, because you know, you know, that's got to, that could be a whole arc next, next season. Um, uh, anyways, but the way that they engage us in critical thought, again, and that's up to the audience member, like not everybody watches South Park and thinks critically, right? Like a lot of people just laugh at the dick jokes and that's that you know but for for the people who you know maybe on a different level who can laugh at a an ass and dick joke but can also like think about what that means which is what you got to do in this class um oh my barn's creaking uh <laughs> Uh, but basically, they use two techniques, and we'll talk about this in a whole discussion next week. They use satire and parody. And I want you to just think about what the difference is between satire and parody. And the basic, the basic way to sort of think about this is, is that parody makes fun of something or someone specifically. It mocks or imitates them to, to uh, make them seem ludicrous or ridiculous. It, it makes fun of a celebrity in particular. It makes fun of a product in particular. It makes fun of a brand in particular, okay? Satire is a larger social commentary. So you wanna make a commentary on uh, the political process in the United States. You wanna make a commentary on race relations in the United States, etc. cetera. Um, and, and you, you use humor um, and it's often not like so outward of a humor. It's more sort of under the, under the levels type of humor to make that critique, to make that point. Now, satire often, often uses parodies within them. So often satire will include many parodies of government officials, of celebrities, of, you know, various people, um, you know, or practices um, in order to make the satirical point. And I think that's really important. Uh, South Park is also, you know, under this contention that life is shit. 
It's total crap. I think we saw this in the circle of poo uh, in a very crappy Christmas, right? But really, like, South Park thinks kind of and presents life as like a shit show. And it is a fucking shit show. I mean, look at everything out there. It's crazy. Um, but the way that they do it is and present it is that they use excess, crazy excess, and they use shitty, potty toilet humor. And we'll talk about this in more depth. Um, the way you want to kind of frame and talk about uh, toilet humor and any humor involving pissing, um, you know, uh, any type of excretion, vomiting, etc., um, but mostly toilet humor is what's called scatological humor. Scatology is the study of shit, the study of feces. Okay, when we think of scatological humor, it's sort of applying that to it's a sort of intellectual way to talk about shit jokes. <laughs> okay, um, so anything dealing with farting, asses, excretion, all that stuff, mostly turds, mostly shit, um, you know, that's scatological humor, and that's clearly a major, 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 major part of South Park. Now, within this, um, they use often what's, uh, you know, a literary trope of the grotesque body. Um, the thought that the body is incomplete, that it's always in constant transformation, and that it's fucking disgusting, um, you know, and that, yeah, like, uh, beautiful models shit and have diarrhea, you know, and maybe they're not actually beautiful, you know, and, you know, they, South Park will often really attack, you know, people that are lauded in society using this grotesque body um, as one of its techniques for its satiric, for its satire and for its uh, parody. But this grotesque body we'll talk about in more depth, but it's, it's basically, it involves a lot of dichotomy, like life and death, scary, um, funny, happy, sad, you know, always like opposites. Um, but it's always this fact that like, you know, I use this little, this image of this body that's in, incomplete is like, we're always making and re and remaking, um, our bodies in various, in various ways. And, um, that we need to understand that the body, it's, it's an or it's it's an organ made up of many organs that we all bleed and we all take dumps and we all puke and we all piss, um, you know. And uh, we'd like to cover that up with some some people. So South Park kind of exemplifies this grotesque body, and they use this concept to mock and mimic so many um, celebrities. Okay. So in this chapter, we talk about um, Peter Ber Berger's four criteria for satire. What makes a good satire? And I'll, I'll give you an example using the Honey Boo Boo uh, episode, okay? Okay, there's always some element of fantasy. There's always some fantastical element, something otherworldly. And you see this in so many South Park episodes. And these fantasies, right, they're so unreal and they're often disgusting and fucking grotesque, and they need to be, and that's a major part of good, good satire for Burger. okay? Not, not Lisa Burger. we'll watch the episode next week, but this is Peter Burger. okay? There's always a moral standpoint. Yo, South Park huh, is very opinionated. In a lot of episodes, they would tell you, I learned something today, you know, that was the moral on blast. That was giving the moral for us morons who couldn't read it in the, in the text. But it's often in the text itself. It's often there. There's a, a, there's a point they're trying to make, and it's a, it's a moral point, okay? There's often going to be an object that is attacked. When you think of an object as, a, as, a, as more like a subject or a human or a person, there's always an attack. And again, Within all of this, there is some form of education. There is some purpose. There is some outcome that comes out of the satire. There's some sort of ending where there's an edification of some way. Again, I learned something uh, today. Okay, and, and it's important to note that satire, again, always or often uses parody. So here's an example. They parody Mama June and Honey Boo Boo, right, um, in this ridiculous episode. <laughs> um, and maybe you've, maybe you've seen it, right? Where they take a very strong moral standpoint by attacking this family to basically, you know, not only show like how like a family will, you know, uh, exploit the, its children and exploit its children in a very like negative, 
uh, way, espousing pretty negative virtues uh, and morals, if that's what you want to call those things. Um, and then they also are critiquing, you know, largely us. The satire, you know, so they use this family and they make this point um, to actually critique us. Like make a, a satire on like the shit we watch, like the garbage, the utter garbage that we watch on television. Um, you know, anything from any of the housewives shows. I know my wife watches a ton of that shit, you know, to sports. Um, all the dumb shit that, that, that we consume. But we literally will watch a show where we're like it's, it's this, this mom exploiting her daughter in a very sort of negative way in a show that is like really not positive um, in, any, in any way, um, but we're still consuming it. So that's kind of like one, that's a little bit of, of, of a way to think of applying Ber Berger's um, four criteria sat satire. The other theory that they kind of get into in this chapter, and we're gonna spend way more time on this um, when we talk about carnivalesque is, Carnival, carnival is this. Just think of like Burning Man or the Oregon Country Fair or any big festival or anything like this where basically power structures are inverted. You know, your lawyer's there with a banana hammock on painted blue. You know, uh, what, whatever it is. You know, like, uh, you know, CEOs are at these things, you know, naked or whatever. And, and, you know, it's just like this idea of like the carnival and the carnivalesque is this compression of, of society. And South Park does this on TV. They bring those who are up here, up here, or thought of up here, politicians, celebrities, etc., and they bring them down here, um, and they show them as pieces of shit, literally Bono. Um, uh, but anyways, uh, Mikhail Bechtin, who was a literary, literary scholar, did an analysis of uh, Rabelais' uh, satire, which was a scatological satire. It had monks shitting, all this stuff, uh, Gargantua and Pantagruel, okay? And Bakhtin basically looked at um, folk culture or popular culture. So um, again, it makes South Park a really good example of popular, of popular, uh, of popular culture. Um, and what he noticed when he looked at this, at this satire is he noticed a, f a few things. Number one, in the carnivalesque, right, of this, of this book, um, in this text, the satire was ritual spectacle, right? Basically, the inversion of power structures. You're taking the, the queen and you're, you're shitting on the queen, right? Or you're shitting on the pope or whatever, right? And we really literally see this in South Park uh, episodes. Um, but, you know, this is just talking about, like, what are carnivals and true nature of, of carnivals and as described in, the, in this book. Okay, this also includes, number two, comic verbal compositions, which are parodies. Right, so we have so much of this in, in South Park. So if you want to think of how to apply Bakhtin's theory of the carnivalesque to South Park, this, we're kind of going, going through that. Uh, genres of Billingsgate. This was using basically playground language, dirty language. And I mean, just think about the language used on South Park. It is so vile. Um, it's so wrong. Um, you know, the way that Cartman uses Jew derogatorily all of the time um, to talk about Kyle and his, his family. I mean, the way that they talk about people um, is such like playground language um, for young kids. You know, the way that they use, um, you know, all sorts of, you know, um, derogatory slur words, etc. so freely, it's, it's playground language. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, it's wrong, but I mean, they, they use it, you know, because people use that shit. And, and it's interesting thing, you know, we should talk about too, like, you know, how does South Park reinforce stereotypes um, or break them down? And we'll get into that in, in a few weeks. And lastly, uh, in Bakhtin's theory of carnivalesque, there was scatological humor, bodily excess, drinking, shitting, fucking, puking, farting, Etc. Um, you know, and what happens through this whole process of the carnivalesque is that you know society compresses. We're inverted. The celebrities become the peasants. The kings and queens become the peasants. The peasants become kings and queens, and that's sort of the I idea here. Is by on South Park by showing these celebrities and politicians as pieces of shit. You know, it brings them down to our level. You know, and shows that they're just they're just like us. 
in fact, they're probably lower than us because they are truly, a lot of them are truly pieces of shit. Um, anyways, um, but yeah, scatological and satirical humor, again, is about the grotesque body, often using two concepts, and we'll talk more about this, the lower body stratum. So this type of humor is anything that really happens below here. So if you think of uh, fucking, pissing, shitting, farting, drinking, eating, wieners, buttholes, whatever you want to think about, that's lower body stratum. Now, what you also have is the upper body, and this is more from Bakhtin, is this. This is anything like dealing with the brain, the wit, or what you could think of as dominant discourses and ideologies. So these two types of humors are often used together. So like discourses like the collective ways that like a topic is talked about through politicians, through the media, through um, you know how people actually talk about it. The words that are used create discourse. It's a larger way of, of, of the, you know of framing and discussing like topics and ideas. So these are often used in combination in South Park. A lot of lower body stratum humor. Um, that also a lot of upper body, a lot of witty comments, a lot of really important like ways of attacking these dominant ideologies and societies. Um, the important thing is that you know in Carnival um, the body becomes a political space and not political like Democrat, Republican, but it's a politicized space. It's a, a space that is is not like a neutral space, um, you know and you know, what South Park does is they parody hierarchy, they make fun of and parody authority and authority figures, and again, they show them as shit. And South Park performs this on TV. They perform carnivalesque on TV in front of our eyes. So it gives us a sort of academic uh, way to think about South Park, even on in these early days. Um, I mean, all sorts of examples. We have a nice slide with Randy Marsh covered in his own semen, uh, shitting out of his mouth, taking the biggest shit ever, puking. I mean, Randy's like, you know, my dude. Uh, but also, you know, a lot of, lot of puking and shitting from him. Um, they often, you know, also use like, uh, in, in more recent episodes, Caitlyn Jenner um, to sort of, uh, you know, deconstruct her. You know, they really have a, um, you know, a really pretty important, you know, important attack on Caitlyn Jenner because they thought Bruce Jenner was a piece of shit and also think Caitlyn is a piece of shit, um, although being lauded as a, as a hero. 